to calculate the runtime for a television on 12.8 volt 100 ampere hour live PO for battery bank. We both consider two scenarios. One hooking a DC TV to our battery bank. And the second scenario will be for a television which uses AC current. Let's start with the AC TV. First, we need an inverter to connect the AC TV to the battery. And we are using these parameters for a simple calculation to get the runtime. 1 TV power rating, which is the amount of power the TV consumes. You can find your TV power rating on a sticker on the back of the TV or the TV manual. You can also use a smart meter to measure how much power it takes. Power is measured in watts. You see ratings like 50 watts, 100 watts, and so on and so on. In case the power is specified in current or arms, as you can see on the sticker for this TV, multiply the current by the TV input voltage to get the ratings in watts. 2. Inverter efficiency and the DC to AC conversion loss factor. The inverter does a nice job of converting DC current from our battery bank to AC current, but this conversion results in energy loss that goes on the battery bank in form of energy draw. A decent inverter offers a 90 to 95% efficiency with a power loss of 15 to 20 watts. In other words, we have a 0.9 efficiency ratio and a 20 watt loss factor. 3. Battery capacity and depth of discharge. We will determine our battery energy rating in watt hour and also consider the extent to which we can discharge the battery with 100% state of charge or SOC. For a live PO4 battery, we can use 95% of the battery full charge per day. Thus, we have a 0.95 depth of discharge per day. If your battery is a lead acid type, keep in mind that you can only get 50% depth of discharge or 0.5 discharge ratio. Thus, a 100 ampere hour battery becomes a 50 ampere hour battery. To calculate the runtime now that we have all the details we need, we have to first determine the total amount of load or power going on our battery bank using the details. Our TV of 50 watts uses 50 watts of energy per hour from our battery bank and DC to AC conversion loss factor is 20 watts per hour. Thus, 50 watt plus 20 watt gives us 70 watt of energy usage per hour. Next, we will factor in inverter efficiency and battery depths of discharge. Thus, we have a safety factor of 1.16, which if we multiply by 70 watts, we get 81.87 watts. That's approximately 82 watts. So we have to divide our battery energy rating by the total power that we have now to get the runtime. Our battery energy is calculated by multiplying its nominal voltage of 3.8 volts by its current of 100 ampere hours. Thus, 1,280 watt hours divided by 82 watts of load gives us 15.6 hours of runtime. Here is the calculation for putting a DC TV of 50 watts on our battery. We have to first consider the input voltage for the TV. If the TV is 12 volts, we can connect it directly to our battery bank since its input voltage is the same as the battery voltage. Otherwise, we will need a boost converter where the TV input voltage is higher than the battery voltage to notch the battery voltage up to the TV voltage. If the battery bank voltage is higher than the TV input voltage, you have to use a bulk converter to dial the voltage down to what is appropriate for the TV. In case the TV voltage is higher than the battery voltage, consider putting the TV on the battery directly to see if this works. This won't do any harm to the TV even if the voltage isn't enough to power the TV. My 19V2 amp TV works pretty fine on my 12V battery bank. For the calculation, here is one for DC to DC boost converter and another for direct connection of TV to our battery bank. With a boost converter, TV power rating is 50 watt. Boost converter efficiency is 95% or 0.95 ratio. 50 watts divided by 0.95 ratio gives us 52.6 watts. That's approximately 53 watts. 1280 watt hours battery capacity divided by 53 watts gives us 24.1 hours of runtime. With our boost converter, 1280 watt hours battery capacity divided by 50 watt gives us 25.6 hours of runtime. Renewable energy is all about efficiency and sustainability. Try to minimize energy usage as much as possible for optimal efficiency. Eliminate energy conversion, be it DC to DC, AC to DC, or DC to AC, to prevent loss factors if you can. That brings us to the end of this video. Watch the next videos, comment and let us know your calculation, runtime, and efficiency. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to see more videos like this. Have a blaze and bye for now.